Now let's discuss the safest option if there are significant badges of fraud in your fact pattern. It's called allowed disclosure or entering into the 2014 OBDP program. Granted, I will admit right off the bat, this is the option that will cost you the most money, both in legal and accounting fees and in penalties to the U.S. government, but it is the only option that comes with a guaranteed amnesty for any crimes that you may have committed, provided you comply with the terms of the program. The first thing I need to tell you about this program is that don't think you can enter this program and only fix your offshore income tax evasion if you've also cheated on your domestic tax filings. Any fraud that you've committed both in the U.S. domestically and in a foreign sense has to be fixed within this program. If you don't comply with the following terms of this program, you won't get an amnesty, you won't pass go, you'll go straight to jail. Matter of fact, there are very few recorded cases in history where someone has made any type of a domestic or foreign offshore voluntary disclosure and gone to jail. The ones that have gone to jail cheated in the process of coming clean and didn't comply with the factors I'm about to discuss. First of all, only legal source income is capable of being cleansed for tax evasion in a domestic or foreign sense. Illegal source income is ineligible. In other words, illegal source income would be drug sales, money from being a hitman, money from being a prostitute, money from extortion. The next requirement is that your voluntary disclosure has to be timely. By being timely, you have to beat the U.S. government to the punch. The moment they open up a criminal investigation against you or they open up an audit, you do not qualify for this program. Theoretically, you also don't qualify if the government has received information from a third party as to your noncompliance. This would be information obtained by search warrant, grand jury investigation, whistleblowers, any type of information, foreign banks through the data exchange, any type of information on you that they have on you that says your hands are dirty before you approach them. Theoretically, you don't qualify for the program. This doesn't mean they won't accept you into the program. Truthfulness. Your voluntary disclosure must be truthful in all respects. Completeness, this is where you'll burn down. If you only decide to tell them about the foreign bank you know is under investigation, but you don't tell them about the rest of foreign accounts or your foreign real estate or your foreign business, you'll go to jail. Also, completeness means if you have domestic non-compliance, you gotta fix it at the same time you fix your foreign non-compliance. The last requirement is cooperation. You must cooperate with the government in determining what the true liability should have looked like in each of the years at issue had you filed a true, accurate, complete tax return. And then you must make payment of the tax penalties and interest that you agree to under the program terms, which we're going to discuss next. The first step in making an offshore voluntary disclosure is to apply and obtain a preclearance. The process begins where I collect your birth date, your social security number, your address, the correct spelling of your name, I include it on a fax and I send that fax off to the intake unit of the criminal investigation division. Let me explain to you that this is a one-way trip. The moment you send off that fax, you have stuck your head out of your foxhole and your exposure for criminal prosecution goes up exponentially if you change your mind. You cannot enter this program unless you intend to see it through to the end. For that reason, this program should not be entered without the assistance of anybody but a qualified criminal tax attorney that understands international tax law and compliance. Again, the reason you want to do this step is the moment you send off that pre-check, it's like you're standing on first base in baseball. You can't be thrown out. You're safe. If the next day the Criminal Investigation Division knocks on your door after you've applied for this program because you have offshore non-compliance issues, you're still safe. This is important because the government is obtaining information on offshore non-compliance in a multitude of ways. John Doe summonses, treaty requests between two countries, an investigation of a foreign bank or a facilitator, either domestic or foreign. Any of this type of information can make you non-qualified for this program. The clock is ticking. Also, if a taxpayer through counsel or through their own efforts makes any attempt to block the providing of information from a foreign financial institution or any type of an offshore entity to the U.S. government, you are ineligible for this program. 
The next step in this process is to supply an offshore voluntary disclosure package. Let me tell you that the government has made this the Full Employment Act for attorneys and accountants. The average voluntary disclosure is a stack of paperwork this thick, I kid you not. The government gives you 90 days from your acceptance into the voluntary disclosure program to complete this package. Additional extensions of time are possible, but not without strings attached. Under this program, you're required to amend eight years of income taxes to correct any domestic or foreign income tax reporting problems or any omitted foreign information reporting problems. You're going to be responsible for the federal and state income tax due on these amended returns and for federal purposes you'll be responsible for a 20 percent negligence penalty. Each state has additional penalties that may apply. In addition you'll be required to file eight years of FBARs and eight years of foreign information returns. Upon submission of your offshore voluntary disclosure package to the federal government, typically nine checks will be due. One for each tax year that includes the tax penalties and interest that applies to that year, and one for the foreign bank account reporting penalty. If any of your offshore investments were what the government considers offshore mutual funds, the PFIC regulations will have to be complied with. Luckily, in the OBDP, the government gives a condensed set of regulations, a simplified set of regulations for foreign mutual fund reporting. Basically, what we're required to do is to mark those assets to market each year and record the gains and losses on an annual basis. Let me tell you, if you have foreign mutual funds, you need a pretty sophisticated tax person to figure these out. We deal with them all the time. And the last thing I need to tell you is that the Offshore folks that are running these programs have no discretion to bargain lower penalties, interest, and penalties than the program calls for at the outset. You agree to these program terms when you enter the program. There will be no bargaining lower amounts later unless you're willing to opt out of the program altogether, which is another option that we'll discuss. Here's why most clients and most advisors will look to any other option to deal with their offshore problems rather than the OBDP. The most expensive part is the FBAR penalty, which on the low end is 27.5% of the high water mark of your foreign accounts and possibly your foreign tainted assets over an eight year period. What do I mean by the high water mark? If you valued all of your foreign accounts, an example would be you have one account that has $30,000 in it on average for an eight-year period and for two seconds that balance shot up to a million dollars. They would penalize you on the two seconds it was at a million dollars, not the average of $30,000. What I mean by tainted assets is that any asset that you have offshore where you have underreported or non-reported the gross income off that asset. Notice I'm saying gross income, not net income. The gross income. So, you have foreign real estate, for an example. You rent it out at $50,000 a year. Even if your expenses are $75,000 a year and you have a net loss of $25,000, because you didn't report the gross revenue of $50,000, it's included in the penalty base. So, in other words, the aggregate highest account balance of your undisclosed offshore accounts and the fair market value of any tainted foreign assets are included in the FBAR penalty calculation. The penalty can be as high as 50%. If you have just $5 in a 50% bank, and I'll explain what that is in a second, and $5 million in non-tainted banks, all of your offshore bank accounts, financial accounts, and tainted foreign assets will be penalized at 50% because of the $5 in that tainted bank. The reason for this is either the bank that you have $5 on deposit with is under criminal investigation and they are of the opinion that they would have identified you whether you entered this program or not, or the bank entered into its own deal with the U.S. government to get amnesty for its own tax crimes. Again, the U.S. government feels that eventually they would have identified you as a target, therefore you pay 50% rather than 27.5%. This list is ever expanding. In the past four months, about 30 banks have been added to this list. 
This is a reason why the longer you wait, the more expensive this proposition could be for you. Not to mention, you may be identified as a criminal target and this program won't be available to you if you wait too long. The keywords to search the IRS website under are foreign financial institutions or facilitators. That list shall come up and you can see if your bank is on that list. Again, there's exposure because of the FACTA legislation and the electronic data exchange that now exists and is in full effect. Don't delay. If you need to make an offshore voluntary disclosure, do it sooner rather than later. The government has also indicated that they might raise the 27.5% percentage at any point to a higher percentage. This data exchange results in a situation where any bank in the world can send in information to the IRS about you electronically through this computerized data exchange in a matter of seconds. Once the information from the FACTA exchange is used to identify you as a criminal target or even an audit target, at that point you're no longer eligible for the OBDP. Bottom line is, get to the IRS if you have this problem before they get to you. To further drive home what I mean by a tainted offshore asset, I'll read you a passage verbatim. The offshore penalty is intended to apply to all of the taxpayer's offshore holdings that are related in any way to tax non-compliance, regardless of the form of the taxpayer's ownership or the character of the asset. These are the OBD penalty assets. The 50% penalty will apply in any situation where a foreign financial institution has been identified as a facilitator of offshore income tax evasion or any promoter, whether domestic or foreign, has been identified for criminal investigation or is cooperating with the IRS in exchange for amnesty. If they're identified and you're associated, it's a 50% penalty once you come in the program, if you're even allowed into the program. The simple use of a John Doe summons to your banking institution can result in you paying a 50% penalty rather than a 27.5% penalty. A John Doe summons basically says anybody that's a U.S. taxpayer that has a deposit with your institution, we want information on them. Again, once the 50% penalty applies to any portion of your offshore assets or accounts, no matter how minute, the 50% penalty goes to all of those assets, not just the tainted asset. What a lot of my clients have found patently unfair and even outrageous is that no amount of offshore income is excludable as de minimis offshore income tax evasion. Even $1 of omitted foreign income is sufficient to withstand a penalty under this program. Said another way, even one dollar of unreported gross income from an OBDP asset will cause that asset to be included in the offshore penalty base. Moreover, there's been situations where you've got five dollars of interest income, fifty dollars worth of account fees, you had a net economic loss since only the gross income is looked at for purposes of this rule. It can be included in the penalty base even where you lost money.